So generally, you most mega agents are about 75% listings, 25% buyers. And they don't work their own buyers. You ever heard the story of the buyer wants to see 50 houses? Well, don't worry, you'll meet them. <laughs> yeah, no, that's right, that's me. It happens. That's you. You're like, that's why I got my real estate license. Yeah. <laughs> Check them all out. <laughs> Seriously. The goal is to eventually be seller focused. The reality is, initially, it's easier to generate buyers, buyers, right? It just is, because you can do an open house to get a buyer ready to buy tomorrow. That being said, if you work your sphere, you can find sellers. Yes, that's why we want you to work your sphere. Because if we can get you into the sellers. We definitely want you focusing on sellers. That being said, obviously they'll turn away business. You get, get paid, right? You're gonna get paid. All right, so let's go seller focus 50%. You're probably going to be a little more like 25 when you begin, but let's go 50%. Conversion rate. So listings taken to listings closed. So do you guys understand what that means? Listings taken in as to listings closed. Right. Correct. Well, yeah, you could have listings sitting on the market for a while. Correct. Those you're not getting paid from. Correct. Or well, they may never close. Closed. Right. Around here, as long as you're priced right, you're pretty much going to close the property. So all the ones that are priced, like they are gone like this. And then the ones that are sitting there, you, I notice like they drop and they drop yeah. and then after a while. And so then I'm thinking, who's, who's the, who's the greedy one? Is it the agent that's saying you no, can sell No, it's the it? seller. It's the seller going, I want this. Yes. And, then and it's the it's agent being inefficient with their scripts. They don't know how to talk to the seller. They don't know how to get the seller to come down to a reasonable price. That's the reality, is it's your job as the agent. You're never gonna convince, I've seen properties, I have a neighbor's property, one of, it's not my listing, somebody else listed it. My neighbor's condo's on the market, been on the market for almost a year. I blame the agent. Uh -huh. You should have never allowed him to list at that price, you knew better. They have now dropped $40,000 in a property that's not even worth $400,000. That is, you should have, done your job, you should have done the proper scripts and you should have been. Now look, if he was 10% overpriced, okay, it was literally like 20. That's ridiculous. So it's when, absolutely ridiculous. When, you, when I see that and I see a price drop mm -hmm. and then another price drop, mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, someone was greedy, now they're finally realizing or they're getting desperate. So how, yes. much, how much more could it be overpriced? And mm -hmm. then I'm gonna go in and like, and okay. NAR statistics will show you that what will actually happen is the property will sell under value because then everybody else is like, it's been on the market forever. So What's I'm wrong not, with it? Yeah, yeah, something's wrong with it. And the person that will actually buy it is somebody who super lowballs it because yeah. it's too high. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a mess. Yeah. Don't let your sellers get into those situations. It's your job to keep them from getting into those situations, right? Like that's our job is to know what to say to them to help them, to educate them. And is it never a practice that if you put a home up there and it's overpriced for whatever reason you can't talk any sense into your client that you would take it off the market and then relist it the, with the new price instead of showing that price drop i just feel like when you see doesn't matter drop, first of all it's in the history yeah okay, i can see everything's been listed yeah. for it and second secondary that will not reset your pricing i mean your days on market the only thing that resets your days on market is a change in company oh. or it's got to be off i think for six months before it will reset the days on market. Oh, okay. So the days on market continue cumulative. There's rules against doing that, otherwise everybody would do that. But then, but if you did yeah. take it off and put it back on with a new price, it wouldn't show a price drop. It would in the history, but not in, you know, when people are first looking at it. When I see price drop, $60,000, I'm like, oh, these guys. Yeah, but you're gonna use your history anyway. Sure. Oh, okay. that's my favorite, that is my favorite little tool. History. Yeah. History. Because there are people that have, that I've listed with three other agents. Oh, oh, oh God. God. And sometimes I'll list with one agent for a lower price, and then they come in and list with another agent for a higher price. I was like, your market's going down. I don't know what you're thinking. Yeah. <laughs> it's very interesting. History is awesome. Okay, so conversion rate. Listings taken to listings closed, so that's how many actually sell. So we'll go 75% conversion rate. Now, conversion rate listing appointments, uh, listing appointments to listings taken. Now, this is different. This is I'm going in front of the, the seller, and I'm going to convince them to use me as the listing agent and I'm gonna get the listing and move forward with the listing, right? So you gotta know the conversion rate on that. You guys know your conversion rates? 
course you don't. You're brand new. You got no stats. That's right. That's why you want to keep track. Because then you can be in six months. I know my conversion rates. It takes me four appointments to sign three listings. Great. How much money do you want to make? How many listings does that take? We know exactly how many appointments you got to go on. By the way, how many calls does it take to get an appointment? Brand new agent, how many calls does it take to get an appointment? Yeah, you were listening. 80 appointments to get, a, to get a, I mean, 80 appointments. I like 80 appointments. 80 calls to get one appointment with, for a brand new agent. How many calls, and this is, I'm talking about like sphere calls, right? How many calls does it take for a seasoned agent to get an appointment? 15. That would, that's good. Oh, 40. It's like 30 or 40. Yeah. Why? Tell me why. Because you, you know your scripts. That's for sure. And you have your database, and you've already been keeping on top of people and giving them their notes. On yes. And you're yes. In mind. It's all those things. I'm better at talking to you, and by the way, you now know me, right? And I've been keeping, and I've been giving you the information. I've been showing up at value. Absolutely. It's both of those things. Just keep that in mind. 100%. Okay, so let's say you're good. It takes you, you take four listing appointments and you can sign three. All right. So, how many listings? Let's see, 150. So let's find out. You guys want to know? You don't sound like you want to know. All right. So, I did that as a net. So, GCI goal for the year, 273,000, correct? That's before expenses. All right. So how many closings do I need per month to make $150,000 net? That's correct, two closings. Per month. Oh, month. Oh, per month. How many listings do I need to take per month? Remember, I've got an attrition rate, right? I'm not going to close every listing, so I have an attrition rate. So, how many listings do I have to take per month? One. Yes. Ten for the year, so one for the month. Yes. Perfect. All right. So to achieve seven closed listings, all right. How many listing appointments do I got to go on? Two per month. All right. Now I know what I have to do. So two listing appointments per month, one listing taken per month, two closings, listings and buyers per month, 22,000. What is that? 200, no, that should be. It's something up there too, interesting. But you guys see how this works? So to break it down by your goals. Oh, that's a month, right, thank you. Monthly recap, 22,000. In gross commission income. That even incorporated that thousand dollars a month for business costs, right? Remember, I had a, mm -hmm. what am I going to spend on business costs? So if you can plug your numbers into this tool, figure out what you got to do. Think that would be important to know? Then, if you're doing your daily 10 4, and then we figure out how long it takes to get an appointment, and then we look at your conversion rates. Hey, Kevin. Hey, Cole, how are you? How are you? You guys gotta know him. Hey everybody. Anybody, hey. anybody know why you gotta know Kevin? Just because I'm such a great guy. That's no. why, Kevin. I know. <laughs> That's why. Because we have something called the condo book, and Kevin is the one who has the condo. Do you have any books on you? Uh, I'll have some tomorrow. When's your okay, next perfect. Uh, they'll be back Tuesday. Okay. So, Kevin is the creator of the condo book. Are you guys familiar with the condo book? Oh, you gotta have the condo book. Coolest thing ever. I'll explain hey. soon. And yeah. I'll, I'll give you guys deals on that too, so I'll hold on to Yeah. So talk to Kevin. You want to get a condo book. So the condo book lists every condo development on the island, tells you how many units, what the breakdown is of every unit. Do not rely on it for maintenance fees because those go up all the time. Yeah. Do not always rely on it for the pet because the, the HOAs can change the rules on pets. Mm -hmm. But it will give you all kinds of stats. You get a map of the condo development. Brilliant. Mm -hmm. Got to have a condo book. They're 50, but he'll give you a better deal than that. So, back to this. So you guys gonna fill this out so you can figure out what you gotta do? Then you got a goal, right? And you can work backwards like any day. And you can work backwards. 
So page 131 in the MREA book also will break down how many appointments you have to go on. So just so you know, that's where that is. But this is really helpful. What page? 131. So this is your, and they are incorporating this into command. It's not completed, but it should be, should be working. But this is the CGI, so definitely check that out for you guys. Get your goals. Now, what do you think you should do when you pull up this CGI and it tells you what you need to do? What do you guys think you should do with that information? Do it. Okay. Time block it. Yeah, I like all the answers. Comment for one other specific answer. Talk to your coach. Tell your coach. Yeah. Tell your coach what your goals are. Right? Because then this is what they'll be accounting for. Okay, what's that gonna take? And then they figure it out. She's like, I don't know if I want to be able to call. I'll keep my goals to myself and I'm not <laughs> No, you may not keep your goals to yourself. Do not ever keep your goals to yourself. All right. Uh, maybe later. I definitely don't want to airplay. All right, so we are really, we are almost done. All right, so you guys have any questions for me so far? Actually, I think that's the last thing I was gonna show you guys. Ooh, early, I like early. All right. Questions? Is that a lot of information? So if you miss, if class. You it's are going to be flogged them. and... I, I know that. Okay. Besides the flogging, <laughs> you go back the next month. Is that, or, we do it every other month. Yeah. Okay. We so do it every other month. It's not going to be a deal. It could be months if you have No. No, no. We graduate you beforehand. Okay. Um, we're not super sticklers. You can mess with a couple of them. So we encourage you to take them again. There's all the recordings, so you guys can watch the recordings. So as you're, if you're enrolled in Ignite, you're going to get the recordings every time they come out. You'll be able to watch the recordings and then you'll also be able to get the homework because there's gonna be, there's homework, there's also extra things that we give you like, hey, you might wanna check this out because it relates to what we talked about today. You're gonna get all of those things. You can go through the manual by yourself. I mean, it's sort of step-by-step. Step. So you can do that if you miss a class just to stay on task. So I'm not gonna be too concerned about that. Yeah, how many are you thinking you might be missing? I just know one for sure. I have okay. a house that I bought that I have a walkthrough on the 23rd. So oh, nice. There you go. So. Excellent. No, that's totally fine. No worries. Any other questions? Um, after we do Ignite, mm -hmm. you're supposed to get so many classes in, in the year or two before you can renew your Those are CEs. Have... So those are through RAM. Those are not through us. Oh. That's you don't get CE credits for Keller Williams classes. Okay. You have to go to RAM and they have to be certain CE classes. It's kind of interesting too because you can usually take the CE classes and not pay, but you have to pay if you want the CE. Okay. Yeah. So you'll see them on the registration page if you register for class. And if there's one price if you want CE and one price if you don't. What is it that you want CE? Well, you need a certain, continuing education is CE, yeah. so it's units. You have to have a certain number of units every year. You have to pay for those, pay for the ones, right. for them to register, but right. you don't need them. Okay. Then you can just take the class for free. Oh. Exactly. So the only time you're paying is if you need the credit. Yeah. yeah. And that's not every class, but that's how it works on some classes. Okay. All Where right. are they? Huh? I can look that up. Oh, there's a bunch of different classes. If they have the, um, I don't know if she's still doing that class. There's a history of real estate on the island, islands. That's a really interesting class. I would highly recommend taking that. I think that's a city credits class if you want it. For Is it the one location or are they all? They're all at RAM. Do you know where RAM is? No, I wanted to ask, but I was like, I can look this stuff up, but I'm just, because you're here, I figured it's fascinating. Uh, you know where Down to Earth is in the old Lowe's? Oh, yeah, yeah. It's right back in there by the funeral home. Oh, okay, okay. Super easy. Yeah, you're gonna take all your classes there. Okay. Yeah, RAM classes are at RAM. Sometimes KW will have classes at RAM, but not very often. Okay, so you'll know if there's something there. Okay, so I want to know some ahas or some things that you learned today that you didn't know before. Takeaways. So 
SMART goals. SMART goals, for sure. Yeah. The LP Mama. Yeah, LP Mama. I agree. That kind of feels more confident than me. Good. Yeah. We want to do that. The difference between millionaire and billionaire. Mm. The goal setting? Yeah. How much we can use our coach? Yes. So true. The difference between coaching and training and teaching. Yes. Any insights about yourself personally? I've been coming into this, I said it a million times, it's like a foreign language, right? Relearning, um, especially being an adult and coming into a whole new career after being in something. Um, but I think it's nothing that, it's just a different level of what I've been doing, um, a different way of thinking. Yeah, so it's almost like a, kind of a growth, actually. Sales. Yeah, right. Yeah. Selling is selling no matter what. It doesn't matter what you're selling, you still are selling. But um, it really is something that it's not something you can acquire. It takes a long time, you know, and I think with the classes and stuff, it helps in the new world. Excellent. Very good. It's scary. A little nervous is okay. Are you guys nervous? Yeah. So many tools. So many tools, yeah. I know. And I feel like we're old school millennials, and I'm like, I don't even know like how to click your computer. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, just so much. I promise you, if you just take it slowly, you will learn it all, mm -hmm. and you'll know what you need to know. And there's just some basics, and once you get the basics down, then it's just learning a little bit here and there from that. It really is. If you, I, what did I say to you at the very beginning? If you guys just walk away doing the 10-4, you take 12 sessions plus the commands, Plus this, and all you actually do is track your database and do the 10 4 at the end, you'll still be successful at real estate. Because yeah. okay. that's the hardest part to get people to do is actually lead generate. Yeah, to like keep it simple still. You know, it is. Yeah. That is your number one job is lead generate. People just don't get it. And the problem is in this business, it's a timing issue. So. If you came to work every day for the week, and then at the end of the week I hand you a paycheck, it's like, okay, like that's what we're used to, right? Or two weeks. This is a 90-day cycle, right? I don't get a paycheck usually for 90 days if you're starting with somebody. So, and that's, that's an average. So the reality is I'm not being told until 90 days later what's happening with my business. So if I'm doing the activities I'm supposed to be doing, I'm not getting a check after two weeks of doing those activities. I have to wait 90 days. And we don't like that as humans, right? Like, we're like, I'm doing my job. Where's my money? <laughs> it's just a society we live in, right? We're used to being paid. So you have to put your mind around, and that's why the grit comes into play. You have to put your mind around just, this is my activity, and I just do it every day. And your coaches have been in this business long enough to tell you They've seen people do this, right? And the ones that just, if you're not slightly bored with your activities in real estate, you're probably not doing it right. And I am dead serious about that because you're probably shiny object syndrome. Like, oh, I should market over there. No, I should go buy this. And I should go buy the golf cart ad, which I bought. Don't buy that. <laughs> you know, and it, that's the problem is that we go from all these different directions and then we haven't nailed down and just do the business. Do the lead generation that works. What's your advice just starting off? What is a what is the good amount of time per day? You know, I only want to do no more than a 50 hour week. I mean, I can break it down and do the math, but what is reasonable to sit down and do your four steps? Is it a few hours? Is it your whole eight hours? Like, what have you seen through past experience or even dealing with people that are new in the business? That's a great question. If you're actually talking to 10 people and it's like everything else, like you're not really good at hanging up in the beginning, right? You're, you're, you're like, my calls are taking 40 minutes. And I'm like, that's because you suck at hanging up the phone. Yeah. <laughs> There's strategies around that. But the reality is you're new. So, and some of these people you're talking to, you probably haven't talked to for a while. So you gotta put the time in, right? 
three hours for your lead generation, your lead follow-up, and your cards should be sufficient if you're doing it every day. Yes. So that's working on lead generation. Then you've got to give yourself time to work on your business. And working on business, in other words, escrows or things that are going on, that's why we encourage you to hire a transaction coordinator. Because you can suck up all your time just running your own timelines. Mm -hmm. I hate the timeline. A little story for you. So I just had a deal. I dual ended both sides, right? So it was a dual agency. I was representing an investor. She was buying a really crappy property. No home inspection, no termite. Like there was not, I was like, I'm gonna run this transaction on my own. <laughs> Biggest mistake ever. It's a pain running all that paperwork. And I didn't even have a, like half the paperwork that you normally have. I was like, that's it, that 500 bucks is so worth it because it zaps so much of my time to run those transactions, be on top of those timelines, it's also a value add to my clients. When I say to my clients, I say, I hire someone to run that timeline. I'm like, you don't want me running that timeline. I said, I hire somebody, and that's what they do. Like, that's at the professional level I'm at, right? Like, I hire someone to watch the timelines and watch them. We're in a contract. You cannot screw up on these timelines. Yeah. By the way, you see agents screwing up on timelines all the time, and you're like, live, contract, legal. Mm -hmm. But, yeah. That's the transaction coordinator. Transaction coordinators. Does Keller Williams have their own transaction that you can, are they outside that TCs, you have? You can use who you want, but we do have, um, Craig Carter, I think is doing the core agents of real estate. Um, and you can hire them if you don't have your own. But you can also do your own. Going rates 500 transaction. So to represent your buyer or seller. And is well, well worth it because the time, because they can't get on the phone and build relationships. Yeah. And regenerate the way you can. Gary Keller will say it. Do not sacrifice your lead generation time to work on your business. He said that's a mistake. Because then you end up with no business to work on because you didn't work at your lead generation. Mm -hmm. That's like mm -hmm. having a business and then not having any employees and trying to do it all on your own and then being so tired that you can't keep up with the level. Like, right. Just hire an employee so you can go back out and do. So think of it this way. Your transaction coordinator is the first person you hire. And they're paid per deal, and they're only paid if the deal closes. Nice. So why would you not? I told you I did my first two. Forget it. Because I was like, I wanted to know the difference because I was doing real estate in California. I was like, I want to know the difference between California. And I was like, dude, I don't need to know how my car drives it, but the damn key in it and drive the damn thing. I do not know need to know how that engine works. I had to teach. So it was probably a good thing because I teach. But other than that, no. Transaction coordinator. Best thing ever. Give me time to lead generate. My number one job. Can you hire a lead generator? And can you called the inside sales agents? And you can, but you don't want an inside sales agent talking in your sphere. Oh wait, those are the people that you pay money to. That's when you pay money and they give you the. Oh, never mind. I was just, that was a little joke. Yeah. Like, can you well, that's just everybody to do. Well, teams first? teams leverage that kind of thing sometimes, mm -hmm. but yeah. Okay. Any more? Give me one more internal aha that somebody got, and then I'll let you guys go. Ready? Um. You're off the hook because you did one already. Yeah. You're scanning your notes. I piggybacked on hers though. I, 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 did you? I yeah, when she I mean, the L -L. This, I mean yeah. the first hundred days. I came in yesterday and I'm like, what am I doing here? You know? Well, hopefully you got some clarity. Yes. Hopefully you got some totally. clarity coming in today. And that's actually my word for 2020 is clarity. And the bold law is clarity is power. And I think that is so true. So bold laws, you guys will hear about bold. So bold is a class that Keller Williams created. And um, these are the, those are the bold laws, right? So, I journal every day, every morning, and every week I pick a bold law and it goes on top of my journal. So, clarity is power is one of my favorites. Oh, top one, I didn't even know that. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, these are fantastic. Like, check them out. You guys be surprised. There's some really good stuff in there. What's the don't listen to your drunk monkey? Drunk monkey. Okay, so the drunk monkey is that, that like devil on your shoulder that's going, 
That's your drug company, you gotta go like the procrastinator, the person. Yeah. Okay. Whatever, whoever, whatever that negative. If any of you don't have one, please tell me because I'm trying to figure out how to get rid of it. Like, okay. <laughs> right? Drug monkey is also yeah. looking at shiny objects too. Yeah, drug monkey is like, well, go do that. Go mark, go work on that marketing piece because that's way more fun than calling people. Yeah, of course that's your drawing. You're like, shut up, I got a job to do. Listen to my coach. Yeah, absolutely. That's also like when you talk about imposter syndrome. You guys know imposter syndrome? Have you ever heard that? Yeah. That's a fun one. So that's the like, I'm here and I have no right to be here. Like, uh, for me, okay, so I'm the head coach. Like, who, well, I'm not a Todd Hudson. Why am I coaching people? I don't know how to coach people. I, who do you think you are? I feel like self doubt. Yeah. Exactly. But it's like you're an imposter. It's like everyone thinks that you're good at what you do. Wow, you've got them all fooled. Oh. That's the imposter syndrome. That's your drug monkey, right? Yeah. So as an agent, like you're a new agent and you'll be in a listing presentation going, and in the back of your head you're going, what are you doing here? This is not, you should not be in this. You suck, like, what are you, you, this should be a real agent sitting in this. If you're not a real agent, why are you really? That's imposter syndrome, drug monkey. Get rid of it. See you later, no more. All right, you guys are awesome. I'm always available in room 202, so come see me anytime you want. And yeah, you are now oriented. <laughs> I'll see you all on Tuesday. Thank you. Well done. Welcome to the podcast, Brian. Oh, Brian Buffini. B U F F I N I, I think. So you're gonna you're gonna log into um, command, okay. not connect, but command, and you're gonna actually.